Be sure to catch the next episode of Just Talking It Up on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. Hey, you forgot our names. No. You did? You forgot our names. Don't be silly. I'm Janet. You're a crash. See? (laughs) She's just like a goose. She wakes up in a new world every day. I'm James Spann. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 14th of January. Needless to say, a lot to talk about. Some icing tonight over northwest Alabama. Some risk of snowflakes Thursday. Brutally cold next week. Bunch of question marks after those statements. Let's get in there and see what we can tell you. Let's go to the Skycam shot. Well, I'll tell you what, before we do that, let's first off just show you where we think the greatest chance of bridge icing will be tonight. Uh, west of that yellow line from near Millport up to about uh, Winfield and Haleyville, Moulton, Decatur, Hazel Green. Uh, and even in that region, you know, the blacktop roads will be just wet. The, the infrastructure is relatively warm from this you know, mild spell we had. But there could be some icy spots on bridges and overpasses. So if you're traveling in that part of northwest Alabama, be aware of that issue tonight. And Again, we'll uh, get into the specifics here in just a minute. There's a look at our SkyCam network. This is coming from Haleyville, and they've been sitting at 32 now for a couple of hours, and they've got some ice in the trees, but the roads are just wet. We've heard of no travel problems there. Pretty much the same deal from Hamilton up in uh, Marion County. Uh, They're sitting at 32, and temperatures are not going to budge much. If anything, they might nudge up a little bit, It's but more than likely they just sit there right at 32. Uh, But again, that's two places where there could be a bit of bridge icing tonight. Now, to the south, that's the Fayette Skycam. And uh, at this point, we're showing 35, and more than likely, they stay just above freezing there. But there's the overall picture. Got this really deep trough over the west. That's what's brought that brutally cold air to the western half of the nation. Just records shattered out there, record cold. And uh, around here, we've got the... uh, uh, overrunning going with the warm, moist air going up and over a very shallow layer of cold air at the surface. That's often a very effective rain producer. And there you go, a widespread rain mass over about the northern third of the state, uh, north of Interstate 20. And uh, again, up in that region, it is just cold. I mean, you talk about miserable. There's a look at the numbers. Haleyville at the uh, uh, airport up there showing 31. That's a coldest spot in the state. Uh, The Shoals at 34, Tupelo 32, Memphis 29. But note down here, mid-40s, where no icing issues at all. Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden. No trouble. You have to go up to northwest Alabama to find the issues. Even Fort Payne, uh, they're sitting at 45 up there. Uh, And look at the contrast around the region. Would you rather be in Macon, Georgia at 76 or Memphis, Tennessee with 29? Or maybe you'd like Tallahassee at 79. That is a whopper of a front. And it's just pretty much parallel to the upper air wind, so it's not moving much. And again, deeper in the cold air, it's just brutal. I mean, you go into Canada, we're seeing some temperatures at almost 30 below zero Fahrenheit at mid-afternoon. Those are not lows. Those are currents. And uh, we're going to have to watch it. Next week could be very cold over much of North America. That's a watch warning map, and again, this might change by the time you watch this. At the time I'm doing the update, uh, we've got a winter weather advisory. The county's in purple for the northwest corner of Alabama, uh, up into western and middle Tennessee, north Mississippi, and then over into the Mississippi Delta region along the U.S. 82 corridor, an ice storm warning. That includes Greenville and Greenwood, Mississippi. And all the counties in the darker shades of green, that is a flash flood watch. The lighter shades of green, those are river flood warnings. So a lot of hydraulic issues here across the deep south. This is the expected rain uh, for the rest of the week, valid through uh, Saturday evening. And the numbers are coming down as, of course, we're midway into this event now. Uh, This is suggesting rain of amounts of about one to two inches. There's the uh, model output. And a very consistent idea there. Additional rains of one to two inches likely. Flash flooding, probably not a big issue because this is not convective rain. This is stratiform. It's just steady type rain. And uh, this is a look at uh, modeling. Let's take a look at that. This is the RPM valid at 6 a.m. local time tomorrow. And uh, again, on the northern periphery of that rain shield, that's where you could see some freezing rain issues over the northwestern corner of the state. Other than that, guess what? It's just going to be cold and wet again tomorrow. This is the big picture. This is at noon tomorrow off the GFS, the Global Forecast System. You can see the deal, a warm 588 ridge over Florida, 
and the Atlantic, a very cold trough to the west. We'll keep an eye on that feature. Down below that, uh, the day will be cloudy and wet. This is suggesting the most widespread, uh, really heavy rain could be over the Tennessee Valley of North Alabama with lighter amounts down this way. Uh, And again, uh, temperatures uh, will be very much in question. Now, let me just say this. Some of the latest guidance has come in suggesting that the the, the warm front begins to move north, and we actually get into the 60s tomorrow. Um. which, needless to say, makes for a challenging forecast. The, the the GFS is showing 69, and the NAM is showing 68 for Birmingham. Now, can that happen? It might. And again, we'll review that as we get into the forecast process here before we write it all down, but that's pretty amazing to see numbers like that. You, you go from a high of 48 to a high of 68. That's a 20-degree swing, but that's the difference on either side of that front. I think for some of you, you won't get out of the 40s tomorrow, north of Birmingham, south of Birmingham. You could be at 70. So, again, it's, it's you know, very, very fine line here. Uh, Wednesday will probably be in the 50s, and everything kind of winds down. Cloudy, maybe a touch of light rain in spots, but uh, no big deal. Now, Thursday, here's the next problem. Uh, we've got this uh, uh, deep upper low the GFS shows that is uh, over the Mississippi uh, River around Vicksburg. That's at noon. All right, this is 6 p.m. The closed upper low is near Tuscaloosa. And at midnight, it's near Atlanta. It's basically running along Interstate 20. And if that happens to be correct, you know, dynamic cooling directly under the cold core could squeeze out some snowflakes. Now, this is the surface look at noon on Thursday, but uh, this is the accumulated snow off the GFS, the 12Z run, showing maybe one to two inches of snow here with dynamic cooling directly under the cold core. Um but we're not going to get overly excited yet for the snow lovers because look at the NAM. It's got the upper low, not along Interstate 20, but along Interstate 40 up in Tennessee. And if that's right, it's just going to be a cool, rainy day here Thursday. So we'll probably mention a chance of rain possibly mixed with snow and make adjustments as need be. So that's the next forecast dilemma we have here. And then we'll go to Friday, and finally everything's out of here. Things kind of get back to normal. Dry. The sun comes back. Highs in the low to mid-50s, exactly where we ought to be. Same thing Saturday, 50s and 30s, and the same thing on Sunday. So a three-day stretch to dry out, but ooh, look at the 1051 millibar high north of Montana. That is cold. Monday, a trough begins to carve out over the east. The cold air drops out. The 1046 high over South Dakota. And then this is Tuesday, the 23rd of next week. Very cold air drops in here. We'll note that the European is much colder on uh, the middle of next week. This is actually Wednesday morning at uh, 6 a.m. local time. And, man, if that's right, ooh, that'll be cold. Uh, again, we don't want to say how cold, but that could uh, it could maybe get us down toward uh, 10 degrees uh, one morning and highs uh, in the upper 20s if this is right. So, uh, ouch. And we typically don't get that cold unless there's snow, but we don't think there'll be any snow with this. It'll be a dry shot. Uh, Later in the month, that's an interesting look, the 26th. It'll be a close call for wintry weather there in the northern flank of that. The end of the forecast on the 30th, deep upper low near Chicago, a vortex, more cold air coming down the pike with the front. So uh, you get the idea. Weather could be really interesting here for the rest of the winter. We wonder if February will make us shiver. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. Notes on the blog, alabamawx.com. You can watch us on ABC 3340 News and the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. Who's got time to listen to boring radio shows? If you're going to listen to something, listen to something good like eavesdrop. My favorite thing about Christmas It's not the presents. No. And it's not the million Christmas parties. And it's not playing Dirty Santa. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's about relationships. Relationships. I know. I know exactly where you're going with that. Yeah. It it just is. It is. And take the time. What if this is your last Christmas and you never know? Just talking it up. They may use the name Jesus in a terrible way when they hit their thumb with a, you know, <laughs> with, a, with a hammer by accident on right. Saturday afternoon when they're working on their car. But don't bring Jesus into a song and give him a beer. That ain't right. Yeah, hey, I know a few <laughs> of those folks myself. Bama Talk Show. 
But before we head for the Dome, we got business to take care of at home. So making plans for the throwdown in downtown Atlanta, we'll have to wait until that post-game rammer jammer rings in the postseason for Bama and the offseason for the barn. Auburn unleashed. That magical score that, that Auburn fans remember, 17-16, came out of that game. And Bill Newton was responsible for the, for the chant, punt, Bama, punt. Bill, thank you for joining us. Uh, good afternoon, Adam. I appreciate y'all having me as uh, the first guest on your show. Worldview matters. And, you know, we've been talking about a number of things last couple of times we talked about socialism. We moved from Islam to socialism, and we were going to continue today to do the same thing. But a lot of things have happened in the world in the past 10 days. Uh, it's oh, heated yeah. up again in, in, in Israel. So I thought it would be a good uh, chance for us to talk about some of the things that relate to worldview as it relates to the Israeli situation and Egypt and all that's going on in the Middle East. High School Heroes. And the plane goes right through the bl- bridge and doesn't catch on fire. It's tons of stuff, man. Uh, tons of unrealistic stuff, but hey, it was really cool, actually. Warning, any of these shows can be addictive, and they are all fun. Listen on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com.